Hello everyone, Scott Magoon here coming to you from my studio. This week, buckle up, we're going to Mars. It's a party for Rover by Kristen L. Gray and me. Kristen's gonna join me from Arkansas to read our book and we'll find out just one thing about it. I'll show you how to draw the Mars Curiosity Rover, plus we'll take a look at your artwork. It's all ahead. Welcome to the studio, it's story time. This week's book is Rover Throws a Party by Kristen L. Gray, illustrated by me. I'm sharing it with permission of Knopf Books for Young Readers. It's Rover's anniversary on Mars. Time to celebrate by throwing the best party this planet's ever seen. Rover hands out invitations all over town, but it seems like he's the only one around. Will anyone come to the party, or will Rover be all alone on his big day? I had a blast illustrating this book, my first space book. It's going to be read for us today by the author, Kristen Gray. Kristen, we're standing by for liftoff. I hope you like that. Kristen included so much in our book, fun facts, adventure. How does she decide on what to include and what to leave out when she was writing this book? I wondered that, and so I asked her recently in our segment called Just One Thing. Let's take a look. Joining us today in my studio all the way from Arkansas is author Kristen L. Gray. Kristen, it's great to have you here. Hey, thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. How have you been? How's the quarantine treating you? Hey, we're, we're doing great. We're probably baking a little much, but yes. banana bread and cookies. And... Oh man, that sounds great to me. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Nice. Here's, our, here's my just one thing question for you. What did you edit out? There was a lonely Rover's book club because, you know, Rover was all alone on Mars. And so he um, was reading a book all by himself. And the fact that went with it is in my, in my mind, it was going to be um, Ray Bradbury's Martian Chronicles because the, they named the landing site for Curiosity after him because he passed away um, the month before. So it's Bradbury Landing in the middle of the Gale, the Gale Crater. So, so it was going to be Rover's Book Club. That's so great. I love that. I had no idea. That, yeah. And that would have been a perfect uh, book for uh, Rover to be reading. I'm sure people who have watched this video and, and saw the read aloud uh, picked up on this. But Rover is uh, sort of celebrating birthdays as, as we all are these days. He's kind of quarantined himself uh, on Mars. <laughs> Right, in isolation. Yeah. In isolation and celebrating a, a birthday like so many of us have been uh, 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 alone or with a, a close family member. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, so and that is one really cool thing about NASA. Is they did program him to hum the happy birthday song. You must have done tons of research for this book. It really shows. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. NASA has a great website. And then Tanya of Mars is the planetary scientist who actually worked on Curiosity and helped. Yeah. and help me with the facts. I'll put a bunch of links in the show notes so people can find uh, more about her and more about NASA's uh, new efforts uh, with their new uh, rover. Fingers crossed it can launch this summer. That was the scheduled time. I think July 18th, but oh, with the, we'll have to see with the way the world's going. Yeah, yeah. What can you tell us about uh, your next book, new projects you're working on? I'd love to hear about what you have in store for uh, readers next. I have a middle grade mystery coming June 30th that's called The Amelia Six. And um, six girls are invited to spend the night at Amelia Earhart's house in the middle of Kansas. And her flight goggles go missing. And they actually really went missing in real life. Huh. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. I have, I found a letter from when Amelia thanked her anonymous person for returning them. Uh -huh. And so I was able to type that letter into the manuscript. So. There's some background there, but it's kind of that, interesting that it. Uh, did they go? They went missing during her lifetime, obviously. Yes, so yes. Yeah. She had, you know, multiple pairs of goggles, but it was her rather historic set that she wore in 1932 on her solo Atlantic crossing. Right, right. So. Very cool. And you must have done tons of research for that as well. Yes, I made two trips to the house read countless biographies, but it was super fun. And you're talking about her childhood home, is that right? Where is that? Yes, in Kansas, she lived with her grandparents for the most part, so. And is that open as a museum now? 
Yes, well, they're closed for the quarantine, but yes, visitors, they offer tours. They have an Amelia Earhart Festival every summer on her birthday, which is super fun. That's and, great. Um, yeah. That's awesome. I, and you saw the documentary on Disney Plus about how they went looking for... Uh, yeah, Robert, Robert Ballard, I believe is his name, who found the Titanic remains, I think, or wreckage in the 1980s is the one that led this. And Scott, what's really interesting is he took two aquatic rovers down. I don't know if you watched it. I no, did. I loved cool. it. I loved it. And I felt an affinity for those rovers. So. Rovers, I know, with their headlights underwater. And I think they searched an area the size of Texas. Well, I, you know, as, as I think you said, uh, it's a great mystery. I love the mystery as well. But yeah. gosh, it would be so interesting to find out uh, right. what, what became of, of uh, Amelia and Fred Noonan, her and navigator. Fred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And the plane. And, yeah. And the plane. And the, what a beautiful plane that was, that Lockheed Electra. God, what a great plane. Mm -hmm. How can people find out more about uh, you um, online or, or wherever? KristenLGray.com. Kristen with two I's and gray with an A. <laughs> I'll post your link uh, in the show notes. People can, uh, can find you uh, that way as well. Kristen, it's been such a treat uh, meeting with you and talking with you about our book and about your forthcoming books. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Take care. Of course, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us again, Kristen. Really appreciate that. Well, what do you say? You and I try to draw the rover together. What do you think? Yeah, let's give it a shot. Uh, today, we're gonna need just simple ingredients to make our drawing. Piece of paper, of course. Does not have to be huge. Can be any old piece of paper as long as you feel like you're going to have enough room to draw on it. And uh, a marker, a black marker, dark gray marker, um, maybe a light gray marker too if you want to add some shading at the end. Uh, that might be a nice uh, way to sort of finish the drawing too. But mostly it's going to be black and white drawing today. And we're going to draw the rover. And it's going to be a little more involved than some of our other drawings. A little more mechanical, of course, because we're drawing a robot um, on Mars. But let's see if we can do it. I'm sure you can. Just follow along. We'll take it nice and slow. You can pause the video if you need a little more time. I'll try to go slow too. And together, we're going to go to Mars. And we're going to get this rover exploring the red planet. All right, here we go. We're going to start over here, kind of in the lower left corner of your paper, if you can. Um, let's do that. We're going to draw three circles to start with, kind of over in here a little bit, all right? Let's go. Two, three, like this. Okay, good, good. And we're gonna make those um, into wheels. These are gonna be uh, rovers' side wheels. And so to do that, we're gonna have to make them really 3D first, right? We're gonna do lines up just like this. Okay. Lines out just a little ways from the circles. Okay. And we're gonna draw arcs that are the same arcs as the ones in our circle, little curves, just like this, as best as we can, okay? It does not have to be perfect. And then we're gonna draw another C shape right in the middle, just like this, right in the middle, just like that. See that? And that's how we make our wheels look a little more three-dimensional. It doesn't look quite three-dimensional yet, but it will, it will get there. Okay, next we're gonna draw the other side wheels on the other side of the rover. And to do that, we're gonna kind of come up right in this area, up in here in your drawing, okay? And we're gonna do the same sized wheels, just like this. There's one, there's two, just like that, okay? You got that? Good. And we're gonna do the same. We're gonna come off the front of it like this. Oops, and look, I've not given me a whole lot of space there, but that's all right, that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, all right? Just like this, like this again. Okay, how are our wheels looking? Good, ready to roll with our wheels? All right, awesome, awesome. Next, we're gonna add, they're gonna look like little hats, believe it or not. Uh, Rover's got these um, strut supports. Uh, maybe you can see them in the back here. Dan, can you see that in the shot? Is that in there? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna draw these little hat type looking things over um, the wheels. And um, we're gonna draw three of those, I believe. And just a little bit above the wheels, just like this, all right? So there's the brim come up just like this, just like it's a little hat. See that? Okay, good. We're gonna draw one here just like this. Another 
pat right there. And again, these are going to be the wheel supports. Maybe like this. Another hat like this. Good. All right. Dan, how's it looking? Looking good. All right, thanks, Dan. My cameraman slash son, Dan. Uh, great to have you here in the studio, Dan, as always. Um, all right, let's draw a line that's gonna be a continuation of the wheel support system. We're gonna come out from the hat, and we're gonna kinda come up in the middle of these two wheels. Watch this, very simple, just a line, just like this, okay? See that? Good. Now we're gonna draw a big circle, well not big, but a good sized circle just like this. Good. And then we're gonna come down and we're gonna connect to this other hat. All right, here we go. We're gonna come down just like this. Connect to that hat just like that. Good. Now we're gonna have a line that kind of comes from this line down to the center of our top wheel. Watch this, just like this, okay? Just like that. Looking good, looking mechanical. All right, nice. Let's, um, what should we do next? Let's draw the inside of our wheels a little bit, a little, uh, the, the hubs, the inside of the wheels. To do that, we're gonna draw a small little circle right in the center of each wheel. Don't do these yet. We're just gonna do the this side wheels, okay? And we're gonna continue, we're gonna add lines that continue to this, like this. Okay, just little straight lines like that. Okay, good. I'm sure yours is looking awesome and almost ready to roll on Mars. Great. All right, let's see. Let's, um, what should we do next? Let's, um, let's draw a line up from this hat and do the far side strut over here like this. And for that, we're gonna go all the way to about the far side of this wheel. So it's gonna go from hat to the far side of that wheel. All right, let me show you really slow and then you can follow me. Just like that, okay? See how I stopped right in line with that wheel edge? Good, okay. Now let's, um, let's see. And I'm looking at a drawing that I've done off camera so I can kind of see what I've done too. I'm not just uh, making this up from nothing. I've drawn it ahead of time and I'm looking to see what I've done uh, in the past. So I'm kind of, I've practiced my drawing ahead of time. And I can't tell you how important uh, practice your practicing of your drawings is. I mean, that's how we get better. Even for professional illustrators like me, it is something that we have to do all the time. All right. You know what? I'm going to draw a circle because that's a nice sort of anchor spot for me. I'm going to do a circle like this. And this is going to be Mars Rover's arm, robotic arm, the beginnings of it. And I'm going to draw another small circle inside of it, just like this. Okay. Now from here, I'm going to draw a line down from that circle to this circle. And that's going to be the lower edge of our rover. Okay. Just like this. Okay. See that? Can you do that? Good. All right. And then we're going to draw another line across the top here like this. Okay. See what I'm doing there? All right. Great. Now, unfortunately I've gone a little too far. So if you're able to, maybe just stop your line there, okay? Now, let's go off to the left a little bit. We're going to go all the way to this hat, from here to this hat, okay? Watch this. Just like that, okay? Good. And we're going to do another line from here over to here, like that, okay? Good. Nice. Okay. Then we're going to come up with a short line like this the back and another short line like that very short not too long even shorter line like this okay even shorter line like that and we're gonna come straight down and connect with this line like that okay so now we've got the start of our rover body I hope yours is looking good I hope yours your legs are looking good let's um Let's, con let's connect the hats to our wheels, all right? These hats actually come out around this side of the wheel and hold the wheel in place like this, okay? They connect to those inner hubs that we drew earlier. So we're gonna come around like this, like that. See that? See how they hold the wheel? It's pretty ingenious. Pretty ingenious little system, those 
smart NASA engineers devised to keep debris and rocks and Martians out of the um, out of the wheels. Okay, let's um, let's let's see what we do next. Let's we're gonna add the UHF antenna back here um, off of this back edge. To do that, we're gonna put two M's, one M, and then the other M's gonna start right next to the other one. Do another M like this, okay? And then we're just gonna draw a line like this, and then a nice big arc that kind of comes like this. Okay, that's gonna be our rear UHF antenna so that the rover can communicate with other devices that NASA has um, rolled out. All right, let's, um, Let's do this. Let's try. Should we add the mast? Should we add Rover's um, head? Okay, let's try it. We're going to draw a little sort of trapezoid shape right in line with this line here. Watch this. Just like that. Okay. And then we're going to come up a little bit. Just like that. See that? Good. Then we're going to kind of come out a little bit like this, like a, like a V shape. Okay, and we're going to draw a line across like this. Good. And then we're going to draw a line across like that. And another one like this. Okay. And we're going to come up just a little bit like that. And again, if I'm going too fast, you can pause the video. I will be here waiting for you uh, uh, once you unpause it. Okay. All right, now we're going to draw the bottom of its head. Uh, almost like its jaw, the lower part of the rover head. And we don't want to start out too far, but maybe maybe like right here. I'm going to go straight across like that. Okay, good. All right. Come up just a little bit on this side. Come up just a little bit on that side. Yep. And we're going to draw in a little bit like this and a little bit like that. Good. And we're going to draw a nice big arc that kind of comes up and over what we've drawn here for the lower part of the head, watch. Come up like this. Like that. How's that looking, Dan? Good? Yeah. All right, thanks, thanks. Okay, what can we draw next? How about um, his eye, the big chem cam, the big cam uh, chemical camera that helps sense um, minerals on Mars? Let's do that. This big circle like this, right? And I'm going to draw a nice little... O shape like that. I can fill that in. So it's got a little reflection of the sun in the chem cam eye. Good. And let's draw a little smiley face like this. And a little eye here like that. A little square eye like that. Okay, good. That probably does not exist on the real Mars rover, Curiosity rover, and little eyebrow. But I think it adds a little life and character to our character uh, in our book. Great, great. Let's add the um, left and right mast cams. Um, and those are down here like this. And these are lower, these are trapezoids down here like this. See that? Okay. And we're gonna add little black squares in there, just like that for the camera lenses, for the optics. He's also got this little wire that kind of connects from its head down to the camera like that. You can do that. It's just a big C twice. You do the letter C twice. Excellent. All right, let's draw its uh, RPS, which is its radio isotope power system. Sounds very technical, and I'm sure it is. Um, let's draw that. For that, we're going to have to make the back edge of this platform for the rover, okay? And to do that, let's come out like this. We're going to make it look a little 3D, okay? Notice I don't go all the way over. I stop kind of in line with this middle strut. Okay, got that? Now we're gonna draw a diagonal line up like this, okay? And that's gonna come across right into our UHF antenna. So let's just draw a line really slowly right up there and stop before we get too far up. We wanna stop in line with this UHF antenna, okay? Now we can draw a line across like this, okay? Good, good. And then we're gonna draw a line down from that spot like that. Looking good? I'm sure it is, I'm sure it is. Okay. And let's draw the fins, the cooling fins in this power supply, the power station. And to do that, we can do this. Good, okay. 
All right, now we're gonna draw a little diamond shape in here. That's kind of like an inner well, circle first. And it's like a little, it's like a, it's almost like a diamond shape. It's kind of hard to describe, but I'll show it, I'll draw it and then you can draw it in like that. Okay. And there's a circle in here, two circles in here, and that little spot right there. Let me do that. We're gonna add a diagonal line in the front like this. We're just kind of adding its grills and other electronic looking knickknacks and doodads on it. We can draw some squares over in here. That makes it look a little more electronic and official. Like this, good. Let's add some treads to our rover, like this. Okay. And, um, oh, you know what we need to do? We need to finish our wheels over here on this side. But to do that, since we're looking at the other side of the wheel, we need to come down like this, straight line like that, good. And for here, this one's gonna be a little different. We're gonna start with a line like this, okay, right in the middle of that wheel. And it's gonna be a diagonal line right up to the body of the rover, just like this, okay? Just like that, okay, good. We're gonna add our lines for here as well. Treads for our rover there like this, like this. That's the inside of the wheel there. Let's continue that through there like that, right? Okay. Oh, cool part. We got to add the arm, the robotic arm, right, Dan? Yeah. All right. Of course. Two lines right from uh, this circle here, this little joint that we drew earlier. And it can sort of end in line with this little hat that we drew earlier, if you think that might work. And then we draw another big circle just like this and a smaller circle like this. Okay. And then we come down a little bit. You can really, it could really be as long as you want, as long as you have the paper for it. And we're going to draw the Molly uh, device at the end of this arm. Molly is M-A-H-L-I, and that stands for the Mars Hand Lens Imager. And that's got all kinds of cool tools on it that we saw um, in the book that Kristen wrote. Um, that's got brushes, dust, you know, dust brushes, so it can brush off areas to get samples. It's got a scoop on it, so it can dump samples into its body where it can analyze um, elements. Really cool little multi-purpose um, tool there at the end of its arm. And I'm simplifying it here. There's a lot more to it. You can add little, you can add lines to it, small squares in it. I find the more lines you add to it, the more technical it looks. Um, it's weird, but it, it's kind of a neat little trick. Um, all right. What else can we add? What else can we add? Um, if you want, you can add a little shading underneath the chin and around the uh, joints. Um, let's add some, um, well, you know what? It's party for Rover, so he needs a hat. Let's give him a little party hat. Just a triangle on top of his head. And you don't have to if you don't want to, but I like to add a little festiveness to Rover. Right. Okay. Let's add some uh, some Mars landscape, shall we? We're just a little simple rocks and uh, lines kind of coming off in the background like this. If you want, you can add small lines like this as well. Um, and you could add another set, another line of mountains there in the distance if you want, like this. But keep it very simple. Keep your lines light too. The lighter your lines are, the more they look like they're in the background. Um, all right. Let's um, let's add a little shading, shall we? Remember I mentioned uh, grabbing a light gray marker. Let's try that. Let's try adding just a little uh, shading to our rover to make it look a little more three D. Nothing major, just a little bit here and there. I kind of did this with my mystery ride car back in episode. Oh gosh, was it four or something like that? And if you add color to one side of your rover, it makes it look a little more three-dimensional, a little more, um, like it's got a little more mass to it. Um, see what I'm saying? Dan, what do you think? Yeah, it looks good. Should we keep going with it? Sure. Okay. Really, any place that would be um, in shadow or have less light hitting it, so maybe in there, maybe underneath these lines a little bit. Maybe the inside of the wheels for sure, right? 
Maybe it's on the ground itself that would be a little bit of a shadow on the ground, of course. Like that. There we go. Maybe in the power reactor there. Yeah. I think that helps, don't you, Dan? Yeah. I think. I think we did it. I think we drew a rover together. I would love to see what you came up with for your rover. And, um, oh, you know what else we could add? Let's add a little, let's add us. We can add ourselves to this drawing. We're gonna be way off in the distance. We're gonna draw ourselves. Watch this. I'm gonna draw Earth way up here, like this. There we are, <laughs> way up here in space on Earth. And I'm going to show you a tweet later that um, NASA sent out recently that showed uh, the Curiosity rover's view of us in space. And it looks much like that. We're just a tiny little dot. All right. Um, I hope you like that. I can't wait to see your drawings. Please send them in to the address on your screen, and I'll share them out on a future episode. Um, let's take a look. Let's take a look at your drawings from previous episodes. I think you're going to like what you see. Uh, let's take a look. Well, we've got some awesome drawings to take a look at this week. Look at this one from this artist. It features the dragon from I Will Not Eat You, but he's taken the blue color instead of the red, and I think it's very impactful, very bold choice. I can tell he worked very hard on this. Look at the ink on his hands, and uh, he's just added a lot more to Theodore the Dragon and made it his own. I love it. I love the smoke, the teeth. Um, the dramatic shapes of triangles towards the back of the dragon. Great job. Thank you so much for sending that in. Keep them coming. I love this dragon too. We've got uh, the, the red dragon now from uh, I Will Not Eat You. And look at the scales on the neck just rendered by simple S shapes. Excellent. W's for the scales, U's and V's for the knees. Great work. I love it. Thank you for sending in that drawing. I love this the sparky flames, too, that uh, are coming from Theodore's mouth. Awesome work. Thank you. More uh, flames and more red dragon action uh, from this artist. Look at this. Great job, too, uh, with the legs. I love how the legs are just kind of coming off um, the center circle of the body. Really nice work here. Thank you for sending that in. Thank you so much. We're moving on now to Where Is My Balloon from last episode. And look at this. I love the shapes uh, that are in relationship to each other here. The sun, the balloon, owl and monkey, the foliage, all very beautifully arranged. Nice composition. The way you've chosen to lay out your drawing looks really good. Nice job. And of course, I love the owl. The, the feathers on, on the owl look great. And of course, uh, monkey's fur came out really nice too. Great job. Thank you for sending that in. And we've got uh, this artist, he sent us in a piece from last week, and uh, he sent in another piece this week, and it's equally as energetic and fun and full of life. Uh, thank you so much for sending in this uh, drawing. I love the owl so much, and I love Monkey, who's just charging in and uh, ready to take that balloon from Monkey. Great work, thank you so much. We've got another owl and monkey drawing from this artist. I love this too. I love Monkey's hair. And I love uh, Owl's eyes, looking right up at that balloon. The balloon is cool too. It looks like it's got uh, light kind of coming off the top of it. And uh, the sun does as well. Great work. Thank you so much for sending that in. And it wouldn't be Scott Studio Storytime without a piece of art from my super fan. Here's his entry this week with this tremendously cool uh, monkey and owl drawing uh, from last week's episode. Love the shape of monkey here. Love the shape of owl here as well. Just good energy, good good vibe overall, but no balloon, at least not in red. We've got one on the far right. Uh, it's a green balloon, and it's kind of blending in with the uh, with the trees. I love it, and I love the sun up there on the top as well. And I think I see in the in the um, refrigerator in the back. I think I see a Theodore the dragon back there too. Great job, thank you so much once again. Keep them coming. I really appreciate it. We've got one more to look at. This one from uh, Where Is My Balloon? I love how Monkey's just jumping off the tree with the balloon. <laughs> That's fantastic. And I love Owl too. Owl's looking up at that beautiful, beautiful yellow sun. The colors in this drawing are really lovely too. Good choices uh, there. Lots of energy too. And I was saying this last week. I love uh, drawings with lots of energy and movement and just a good feeling to it. And these drawings, all the drawings this week have that great feeling um, that uh, I, I love. So thank you everybody for sending in your work. If you'd like to share a drawing on an upcoming episode, send it in. 
and I will uh, put it up on screen and we can all take a look at your artwork. Thanks everybody. Check out my website. I've got tons of stuff on my Rover Throws a Party uh, webpage, um, including this great activity and a huge shout out to Renee and Chuck, and Chuck over at the Little Earthlings blog. Uh, they came up with this really fun uh, Lego Rover activity, Lego building activity. Uh, you can check that out. There are coloring sheets. Um, there's tons of videos up there that you can look at, actual Rover videos. Um, I've also got behind the scenes sketches, you know, sketches that I've done when drawing the book, and uh, also art I did when I was a young artist tronaut. Um, so you can check out uh, those drawings as well. Hope you'll check all that stuff out. Thanks. That's all the time we have for this week. Thank you so much for being there. I really appreciate your tuning in. Please like and subscribe. Ring that notification bell. It lets me know you care. You can find all of my Scott Studio story times up on my website at scottmagoon.com. We do new episodes every Wednesday morning. Okay, everyone, that's all for now. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, though, stay safe, healthy, wash those hands, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care.